Niggas try to press us in the store one time downtown. Some, some, a few dudes, man. I told that nigga Joe, yo, get out the store. I will fuck all y'all niggas up. What's up? Willing to take the L, bro. I'm not scared of nobody, bro, but I just respected Fat Joe, bro. I really felt like Fat Joe was going to look out for me, bro. And he didn't, bro. So, so where, where y'all fell out? When was this? we looking back, Choke, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to feel like, when I quit on him three different times, he always kept it deep down inside and said, I'm going to get this nigga back some way, somehow. Right? But I made up for that, bro. Like, yo, bro, I went to Asia two times without you, bro. You never got on a plane. One time we got threatened. They said, we're going to cut our heads off. And you didn't get sued because I, I came up with the master plans. Two times. I went hard for you. I wrote three albums, then some. I formatted all the way up on a plane, coming back from Australia. I got footage, bro. Niggas wasn't really, all the way up wasn't ringing off like that. I had a record called Hundreds and Fifties with my brother Kish Gunner. That shit was ringing off. We performed all the way up and then performed Hundreds and Fifties. And the, 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 the reaction to Hundreds and Fifties was way stronger than all the way up, bro. And Joe was like, damn, T.A., you might have a hit on your hand. And I got a video that I shot to Hundreds and Fifties. Joe's in the video, bro. But he never really went hard with my music. So so when we, when we fell out, it was, it was going... Me, me quitting on him three times, I felt like he held that down inside of him and said he's going to get me back. Then I dropped the, the one-time record, and fuck it, I'm going to say it. Somebody that was in, in, in Cool and Dre camp, they had hit me up, and it was like, yo, I just heard a conversation. I was in the studio with, with Joe, Cool and Dre, and um, Dre said, yo, Joe, we can't let this nigga blow. One time is already on the radio, all over 187. All over 105, Cosmic Cab and Philly's playing it. They're playing it in Tampa. They're playing it in Orlando. They're playing it in Miami. It's the shit is getting spins. <laughs> the BDS is just picking up. All they had to do was drop the bag to take it to the next level. It could have been the next all the way up, the next lean back. It had Joe and Remy on it. They said, yo, the nigga Dre was like, yo, we can't let this nigga TA blow up. He ain't putting enough work. Putting enough work, fam. Dre. I wrote over three albums for this nigga, bro. You don't believe it? Ask that sucker nigga when you see him in Miami, nigga. How didn't put in enough work? You the sucker nigga, Dre, that went and produced a hit for 50 Cent while we was beefing with them niggas, G-Unit. And Joe put you on, nigga. You ain't cool. He put y'all niggas on. But what's up with loyalty? Dre's right there. Dre shot 20, 30 videos with Joe. Albums, nigga. Do Dre deserve that? Get the fuck out of here, nigga. He don't deserve that. That nigga's the fucking devil. He know to keep his mouth shut. Because he know what I know. And it's very valuable. And it will burn him. Burn that nigga alive, bro. Them niggas, no, don't fucking play with me, bro. None of them niggas don't play with me, bro. I know too much, bro. So Dre blocked that. Dre blocked the Gazi was going to put the 150 because Empire put the um put it out. Gazi was going to put up the buck 50 behind the record. You know you got to spin that bag. Keep it, keep mm -hmm. it up. So, Gazi took the buck, the buck fifty, and put it behind. Pick it up, nigga. Said immediately, Dre started working on, pick it up, the Tupac shit, the sample. Them niggas, I, I heard they pay like seventy thousand or some wild shit, sixty five thousand to get it, get it cleared, the sample. Record went nowhere, bro. Them niggas shot a big ass video in Vegas, all that, bro. The record went nowhere, bro. I had niggas coming up to me saying, "Yo, TA, they hating on me. They don't want you to blow." I'm not going to blow niggas up because I, I got love for a lot of niggas, too, that's still close to the sucker nigga. Niggas is telling me, like, coming from the inside, yo, they hating on you, bro. They hating on you. His his own flesh and blood was calling me, put a nigga on the phone from Rock Nation. Yo, you was supposed to get 30000 a DJ, this person, that person. Joe took the bag. He ain't give it to y'all. Cut off his ex-manager. Mad at his ex-manager because his ex-manager is putting money in our pocket. Team player, bro. Yo, Joe, give us the get a per diem for them, Joe. What are you talking about? Joe, they're, they're entitled to the per diem. That nigga Joe never gave per diem. But when the ex-manager was on board, that nigga was making sure we was eating, bro. Hey, yo, T.A., man, damn, bro, you killing shit on the stage. I'm going to get you some more money. Yo, yo, Spin, I'm going to get you some money. He was getting the DJ bookings. When we go, before we go on, the DJ was getting paid. He'd get $1,000, $1,500 just to spend, to hype the crowd up before Joe and me, before me and Joe come on the stage. Team player. Team players, bro. The nigga Joe's evil, bro. 
You will owe me here, owe me three thousand. We'll be overseas with this nigga for two, three weeks. He owe me three thousand, so I gotta. He won't even give us the per diem, so we can feed ourselves. We gotta wait for this nigga, like niggas is fucking kids, the sons. That's why I call them niggas the sons, because I know how they moving, and I can't. Come back to the U.S. Saw you. Rent is due. Now I'm two weeks late. I gotta pay that buck fifty, that late fee, and I live in the house with the landlord. And I'm hearing shit from my girl. So I got the landlord knocking and I got my girl going crazy, rocking me to sleep. Mm. And then I called Joe, he like, yo, it's the accountant. And I called Vanessa and she's like, talk to your boss. I'm tired of your niggas calling me. He's the one telling me to pay y'all late. So it just, I started losing respect for the nigga. I started, I started saying, fuck this nigga. So I told him, I said, yo, Joe, take one time. Take the record, it's yours. It's yours. He was like, nah, yo, make another hit, make another one. You gotta, we gotta break off Fat Man Scoop. We gotta, we everybody need um publishing. And then I say, y'all don't need fuck it. I don't want no publishing. He said, cause I got public, I need publishing, scoop on 12% publishing, Remy needed, and and this, then Wu-Tang, they he, he gave me some shit. I was just like, yo, Joe, I don't want nothing from it, bro. Just make it your record, Joe. Let's take it to the next level. Let's let's perform this shit and get show money. He dug that shit. Begged him. I begged him, yo, please, Joe, take the record, bro, because I just wanted to eat. I just wanted to eat so I could feed my family, bro. Like, I beef with my family, bro, for this nigga for, for years because they felt like I took his side. Oh, bro, I was missing holidays with my family, bro. I'm family oriented. I was always with my family, bro. I'm with this piece of shit, fuck nigga, fucking slimy, fucking pink, three inch king ass nigga. And come on, bro, begged him, take the record, Joe. He wanted me here. He wants TA to be fucked up. So I went, I found the kid called Dan Mike L. So I'm already at odds with Joe for one time. You heard all that shit I was just talking. So just imagine how I feel, Joe. The record is up on the radio station. Niggas is calling, yo, yo, I'm going to do, I'm doing little hostings, walkthroughs. I'm thinking like, yeah, I'm going to finally get my way, bro. And he knew that because he knew I wasn't a yes man, bro. I might have done everything I've done for Joe, Joe, but I was never a yes man, my brother. I used to tell that nigga right from wrong, and he ain't like that shit. All them niggas with him? Attention. You're right, God. Boss, so I can, so I can as can. Yo, Joe, let me on your boss, please, Joe. That's all those niggas, bro. I'm not those niggas, Joe. I don't give a fuck about none of those. Them niggas is talentless nobodies, bro. His man, the other frozen princess, Niggas got positions, they don't, they don't deserve it, bro. So, yeah, I already felt some type of way. I, I went and found a kid called Dan Michael mm -hmm. from um, Kentucky, Atlanta, smart dude, graduated from um, Kentucky. So he, he his drive for music was, was, was legendary, man. And I, I felt this drive and he reminded me of me. He told me how much he loved music and he had some talent. So I said, I, I'm still with Joe. Still with him. So I, I let Joe hear his music. Joe's like, yo, this kid is phenomenal. Who is he? How old is he? I said, yo, he's young, bro. Like, fresh. He only got like four songs, but he he's phenomenal. We can coach him. Joe wanted to rob him. Joe wanted to rob him, bro. Joe wanted to sign him to a never get off records contract. Yo, we're going to rob him. He going to do everything we say. And if he don't, he's never going to put no music out. He did that to a kid named Nicky Shades. Fucked his whole career up. The kid couldn't put no music out. That nigga went to school, film school, and started directing, bro. Nicky Shades, Nick Shades, Nicky Shades. He's on Joe's albums. I think on Dark Side 3 and all that, or Dark Side 2. He's on those albums, Nicky Shades. Joe fucked his life up. Look for him. He's out there in Miami, Cuban kid. Joe fucked him over. So I went inside there, Michael. I wisened up. He fucked up. An opportunity I had with this girl named Zarati Moss. She's from the Bronx. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Looked like Nicki Minaj. And she's still phenomenal. She's only like 27, 28 now. She still have a chance. I spoke to her recently. Joe heard her went crazy. Oh my gosh, she's beautiful. She's nice. I was going to work with her, manage her. I was going to do that. That was the deal with me and Joe. I introduced her to Joe. Brought her around, and then 
Joe exchanged numbers with, with her, which I was cool. I found her. I'm looking at Joe like, he's my brother, Choke. Yo, Choke, I'm your brother, and I'm in Africa, and you in the U.S., Choke, and I know you have the power to make things happen with somebody's career, and I know you're going to do right by me, Choke. I'm bringing them to you, Choke. Mm -hmm. like an A&R at this point. I'm bringing them. Yo, I got you. Yo, T, I got you. Yo, we're going to get it. Yo, T, take this, take this, 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 this. Let's get it on paper. You're going to do it the right way, right? Right. So the nigga Joe started calling her, doing business with her without me being there. He ain't even letting me know. Yo, come to City Island. Come over here. So she's calling me like, yo, why you? Two times I went out with Joe, you wasn't there. And I asked him. And he's like, yo, don't worry about T.A. You with me. You good. So I said, yo, nah, don't worry about it. He got you. That's my brother. Woo, woo, woo. So when it was time to do the contracts for her to sign, that nigga hit her with a, 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 a I think, what she say? What she said? I think a 70, 30 or 80, 20. Yo, bro, she called me and went crazy on me. You a bitch ass nigga. Fuck you and your man. You's a crook nigga. Don't ever call my phone. You fucking bum sucker nigga. Suck my dick. You know how Bronx girls talk, bro. Crazy on me. I ain't even know what was going on. I'm like, yo, and I asked Joe about it. Joe's like, oh, the lawyer did that. That wasn't me. I, I say, I look at this nigga like, yo, Joe, for real, Joe? So the lawyer just going to do business on their own, nigga. They, you might as well be signed to the lawyer, nigga, and work for the lawyer, nigga. The lawyer supposed to work for you, nigga. Nah, nigga, you told the lawyer what to put in that contract, nigga. Niggas ain't dumb. So shorty, I never spoke to her again for like years, bro, until like five months ago when I first started beefing with Joe. And she was like, yo, I'm sorry. Now that I know that wasn't you, it's all Joe, you know. But I'm like, yo, it's all good. I don't I don't blame you. So I signed Dan Michael because I learned from that mistake. I never had her on paper. So I said, all right, I'm going to sign Michael. I broke it down to my cow, what I want to take. It's not okay because Joe's going to put the bread up. I'm going to take this little percentage, 40. We're going to take 40. Joe might give me 10. Or you could take 30. He's going to put some bread up. And you take this. Cool. We did the deal. I told Joe I got him signed. We got this. That nigga was like, he told somebody close to him that, yo, that nigga T.A. wasn't up on his business. That's crazy. I'm not fucking with that kid. That nigga went and signed him. I'm not fucking with that kid. That nigga told me, bro. Word for word. So I was like, fuck this nigga. So I'm performing, doing one time at the show, trying to promote the record, get some get some money to come in, you know what I'm saying? And the nigga Joe had told the DJ, yo, and it's after the show. We do a whole 30, 40 minute show. Joe walking off the stage already. He's running to the back. I would stay on the stage just to perform one time to, to give it some light. That nigga told the DJ, don't play my song no more. Yo, don't play his song no more, yo. Don't play that shit no more. So I'm on the stage when Joe walks off. He was at um Shula Parkway. We did something for Ruben Diaz. And and I'm looking at the DJ and the nigga just looking at me. And he just packing shit up. When, when he know he's he one of the niggas that told me, like, yo, nigga. Perform that shit, nigga. This shit is a hit, nigga. But Joe told him don't do it. So he's just listening to what Joe said. So me and him started arguing out there, walking towards the back back to the um the sprint up. We started arguing. And then he like, he's like, yo, I'm tired of y'all niggas, yo. Talk to your brother, nigga. Your brother told me don't play your song. Y'all niggas be talking, talk behind each other's backs, say that shit to each other's face. And I'm like, yo, Joe, for real? He's like, yo, Spain, what are you talking about? I'm like, yo, but Joe, I can't perform the song. He's like, yo, T.A., man, yo, yo, make another song, this, that, and the third. So that's 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 what we was on top of all the threats and shit like that. I'm going to give you one, Joe. I never gave nobody, right? I'm going to give you one. Angelica Villa. Know what that is? The Dominican girl that Joe signed. And they sketchy is so cool, yo. They sketchy was my bro. If he if he's loyal to Joe, he wanna take Joe Joe's side. I understand it, but super cool dude, bro. Like club promoter, that's his niece. So Joe signed her. Long story short, let me get straight to it. I don't know. Joe's like thinking I'm gonna fuck his money up with her. He already we already had a conversation. I already told Joe, like, yo, Joe, I would never try to talk to her or do anything. And he's just like, nah, T.A., I know. T.A., I know. I know that she likes you. This stand the third. This stand the third. I say, yo, Joe, she, I don't even like young girls like her, bro. She was, like, probably 20 at the time, uh, something like that. 
I said, yo, John, I don't even like young girls like that. He's like, nah, but yeah, I got to keep telling you. So he's just looking at me. Then we in City Island eating at JP's. And she's sitting right on the side of him. Before one time came out, he looked at me and was like, yo, don't get too big on me. I said, what you talking about? She was right there. She heard it. If she want to keep it real, bro, she will, bro. I know they loyalty is to Joe, but real is real. Truth is truth. That nigga's a crook. Look what he did to Liza Rios and her three little kids. Pump supposed to be his brother. He's a sucker. So if she want to keep it real, she can keep it real, bro. So he said, yo, don't get too big on me. I'm like, nigga hurt my heart, bro. I, I realized, I'm like, damn, yo, he's not going to let me win, bro. He's not going to let me come out, bro. All them shits, all them times he's telling me, yo, there's no life outside of Terror Squad. That's what he's talking about. Yo, nigga, it ain't, if it ain't coming in here through me, nigga, and I ain't taking what I want, then giving you the scraps, you not going nowhere. So, we had did a show. He did some reggae thone concert, and and they sketchy was like, yo, come ride with us, come ride with us. And I'm like, nah. He's like, nah, yo, my niece said to come ride with us, come ride with us. I'm like, nah. It ain't happening. He's like, all right, T, I'm like, I'm going to just ride with Joe and them. So, we end up in YC. Joe takes me and Angelica Villa to the back room and up NYC. And I'm just speaking my truth, Joe. I swear on my kids' life, bro. I could die. They could die. Both of my kids, bro. Mm -hmm. I know if they want to lie and be like, yo, he's lying. You know, I'm swear to God, bro. And I know she told somebody that they know the truth. Your yeah, man, Joe took us back in the back room and was like, yo, Angelica, you can't like him. TA's a hoe. He fuck bitches for a living. He fuck mad bitches for a living. And she's like, but Joe, why are you telling me this? He's like, yo, TA, tell her. I said, yeah, you can't, like, all I do is fuck bitches every day. And Joe was like, yeah, me too. Me too. So she was like, okay. I said, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a good guy. I'm a bad guy. So to, to, you know, prove to him that I don't like his artists, his money. I would never step on his toes, though, bro, to mess his money up. Like, I know how this shit go, bro. You mess with a girl, you stop messing with her. And I know me, bro. And I look at Joe like my brother. I'm not going to do that, Joe. I'm not going to fuck his money up. I'm, I ain't that type of nigga. I'm not going to fuck your money up, bro. I fuck bitches with you and all that, nigga. But these are bitches we don't know. Like, we ain't got to see them again ever again in life if we choose not to. Or they choose not to. But somebody that's in the family, that's that you brought in the family, that's supposed to be our sister, I'm not doing that, bro. And you you see you see what's going on right now, Joe. Like, people are picking and choosing sizes. And they know the real, bro. They know the real, bro. Everybody know the real, bro. So he felt like his artists liked you? Yeah. Yeah. I felt like she had, like, some type of little little mini crush and stuff because we was on a yacht, too. We was on a yacht one time, and um, I was sitting down, and then she came and sat next to me, and she was talking to me and stuff like that. She was always polite. It wasn't nothing. I never really – I never pushed up. I never said nothing, nothing crazy, bro. It was – it was. Right. But I, you can tell, bro. You can tell she was young. And then the nigga Tony Sunshine comes up to me and say, yo, don't fuck the money up. And I'm looking at this nigga like, nigga, you just got back down, nigga. You left for 13 years, nigga. And you this joke, nigga. And you want to sign with somebody else, nigga. Get the fuck out of here. This nigga telling me, nigga, don't mess the money up. But look who's on the side of him. Tony Sunshine. I'm not bitter, bro. I'm not bitter, bro. I don't give a fuck about... I will never get on stage with Fat Joe again. Ever. I don't care about seeing Fat Joe. I don't care about saying what's up, Fat Joe. I don't care about anything that got anything to do with Fat Joe. I'm happy he's getting strong and he's becoming very successful because these are conversations he talked about with me. Yo, T.A., I'm going to take over. I'm going to catch Khaled. Yo, this nigga Khaled, I'm going to take over. T.A., fucking Khaled, nigga. I'll put Khaled on. Yo, watch yo. I'm going to get this nigga. Yo, T.A., they throwing this to me. T.A., why? T.A., he wants young money. He went over here with Rick Ross. T.A., nice with Jay-Z. Damn, this nigga Khaled is going to make a million dollars. T.A., that's what it's about. I, I listen to all that nigga, all that shit, crying, bro. I was there for all that Khaled. Wasn't there, bro. And niggas talk about loyalty. 50 Cent went in Khaled mother's house or wherever they went and, and took video of her. Took video of her. You feel what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, uh, laundry man. At the laundry man, yeah. And then and and and, and Joe supposed to be cool with, with, with Ja Roof. Them niggas 50 and Joe wanted to kill each other, bro. I know. I know what Joe wanted to do. He just couldn't get him. 
50 was too, you know, he was too connected. But Joe wanted to get 50 back, bro. He wanted to get him back. And I'm sure 50 wanted to get Joe back. Because Joe's a nigga, especially in that time when he was strong, he's a nigga you don't really sleep on or play with. But he ain't got those those real ones with him no more. Because they realized this nigga is just a ball swinger. Put Jay-Z balls on his forehead for goggles. Drink the piss out the gold bottle. Special delivery. G Dap, nigga. <laughs> That's what he is, bro. Joe's a fucking son. And he gave up his boss hat, his Don hat, to be Jay-Z's son. And I'm not mad at that. You right. want to be rich. Like you said, he sold his soul. But did you know how did he sell his soul? He took his soul out through his asshole, nigga. He was bent over and they just went in there with a fucking suction cup and a suction cup and sucked the nigga's soul out his ass, his nasty spider web ass, nigga. That's <laughs> That nigga, bro. So, so yeah, man. This is we. I started. I started to feel like I was losing touch in in the relationship and brotherhood with Fat Joe when all of that stuff started happening. And then he just started doing sucker shit. He brought Tone back on. Which I'm not mad, bro. Like I'm not a hater. Everybody get it. Everybody deserves to eat, right? Cool. I'm not worried about nobody else's pockets but mine. But when you Somebody must be calling this phone. He'll be back. I think somebody calling this phone. Let this be a lesson to y'all. If you are somebody right now that's around a hot rapper and you just a hanger on and you getting promised you're going to get this and you promise you're going to get that and you promise you're going to get this. Oh, I got you. Yo, don't worry. This, that, and the third. Get shit in writing. This TA story is goddamn almost every rapper in the game, got a nigga that got this goddamn same story. They sat there and rolled with them and helped them and held them up to their success until they fucking hands was bleeding. And shit, and then the nigga, hey, nigga get up over the wall and don't even stick his hand down to grab yours to pull you up and get you out of there, right? Nigga just look right at you. And go ahead and walk off and shit. And thank you for the boost, niggas. You know what I'm saying? Everything is business, man. I learned that. I learned that at Rockefeller. Rockefeller family. Rockefeller family. Rock la familia. Rock la familia. And you do so much shit for free. So much shit for free. So much shit for free. Over and over.